Seven years have passed since the Falcon Heavy rocket had its first big launch in 2018, but even today, watching it take off still feels exciting. Every time it flies, people from all around the world stop and watch. This rocket shows how far spaceflight and private space companies have come. Falcon Heavy is not like SpaceX's Falcon 9, which launches very often. In 2024 alone, Falcon 9 had 132 launches, but Falcon Heavy only launched two times that whole year, and it hasn't launched yet in 2025. That makes each Falcon Heavy flight feel very special. Now that it's already mid-2025, many people are wondering when it will fly again. The good news is, another Falcon Heavy launch is coming soon. After Falcon Heavy sent the Europa Clipper spacecraft to space in October 2024, it is now preparing for its next mission. It is planned to launch in December 2025. This time, Falcon Heavy will carry something called the Griffin Lunar Lander. Griffin is part of a mission called Griffin Mission 1. It will take a special rover named the Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or Viper, to the moon. The Griffin Lander will target the moon's south pole where the Viper rover will explore for 100 days to search for water ice. This marks NASA's first attempt to measure lunar ice from the surface, which could support future astronauts and fuel production for deep space missions. Falcon Heavy is scheduled to fly Griffin Mission 2, which could happen in 2026. NASA's choice to use Falcon Heavy instead of the Vulcan Centaur for these moon missions likely came down to a few key points. First is cost. Falcon Heavy usually costs between 90 million and 150 million United States dollars per launch, depending on the mission. Vulcan Centaur and other heavy rockets from ULA, like the Atlas V, often cost over 100 million and sometimes more than 200 million dollars. But cost is not the only reason. Falcon Heavy can carry a lot more weight. In its fully expendable setup, it can lift up to 63.8 metric tons into low Earth orbit. That's about 140,000 pounds. Vulcan Centaur, on the other hand, can carry about 27.2 metric tons, or 60,000 pounds. Even when going to higher orbits like the one used for satellites, Falcon Heavy still wins with 26.7 tons compared to Vulcan's 15.3 tons. So overall, Falcon Heavy gives NASA more value and more strength. It is the better choice for sending heavy equipment to the moon. Now. Why is Falcon Heavy stronger? The answer is in its design. Falcon Heavy is basically three Falcon 9 rockets connected together. Each has nine engines, which means Falcon Heavy has a total of 27 engines that fire at launch. Vulcan Centaur only has one main booster with two engines and a few small solid rocket boosters on the sides. That is much less powerful. The engines on Falcon Heavy use a mix of liquid oxygen and refined kerosene fuel. This setup is tuned for strong and efficient performance. Vulcan's engines use methane and liquid oxygen. This can work well, but right now they still don't produce as much thrust as Falcon Heavy's engines. Thanks to its three-booster configuration and 27 engines, Falcon Heavy delivers impressive lift capability, enabling it to carry heavy payloads into space with ease, an advantage previously outlined in its launch specifications. Plus, it has another big advantage. Some of its parts can be reused. The side boosters on Falcon Heavy are built to land back on Earth after the launch. They come down slowly and land vertically. This helps save money because the same boosters can be used again in other missions. However, SpaceX has stopped trying to recover the center core in recent flights. That part is harder to land because it goes farther out to sea and needs more fuel to slow down and land safely. Using extra fuel for landing takes away from the fuel needed to carry heavy loads. So SpaceX now focuses on recovering only the side boosters to get the best performance. Meanwhile, Vulcan Centaur is fully expendable. None of its parts are reused. Once it launches, the rocket is gone. That means more rockets need to be built, which increases the cost. Falcon Heavy was designed from the start to be a very strong rocket by using a modular design. It puts together three Falcon 9 cores to get more power. Vulcan Centaur, on the other hand, was built to replace older rockets like Atlas V and Delta IV. It was designed more for reliability and government missions than for the most lifting power. 
Now let's talk about something important. Why doesn't the ULA use reusable rockets like SpaceX? The company's chief executive, Tori Bruno, once said that reusability does not save as much money as people think. He explained that reused rockets need to be carefully checked and repaired after every flight. This takes a lot of time and effort. The company also needs ships to recover the boosters, special landing areas, and buildings to do the inspections. All this adds more cost. Also, reusing rockets only saves money if a company launches many times each year. ULA does not launch that often. In 2025, they are planning for only 20 launches. In 2022, they did eight launches. In 2023, only three. Most of ULA's customers are government groups like the United States Space Force or big companies like Amazon, which is working on its own satellite internet project. SpaceX, on the other hand, supports many different customers. It had 138 launches in 2024 and plans for 170 in 2025. That high number of flights makes reusability worth the cost for SpaceX. There's another problem for ULA. Rockets that are built to be reused need more parts like landing legs and heat shields. These parts make the rocket heavier and harder to build. Some customers, like the military, care more about launching on time and being very reliable than saving money. But avoiding reusability has caused problems for ULA. Their rockets cost more and are less competitive. The company's profits have dropped over the years. In 2016, ULA made about $650 million. In 2023, that dropped to only $80 million. Things may get better in 2025, with 12 planned launches that could bring in $320 million. But there is still uncertainty. The United States Air Force has over 20 missions that are delayed because Vulcan is still being worked on. Switching from older rockets like Atlas V to Vulcan has been slow. This is affecting national security plans. Because of these delays, the Pentagon is using SpaceX more often. SpaceX has taken over some missions that were meant for ULA. For example, they now launch some of the country's navigation satellites. Since SpaceX can launch often and reliably, the military sees them as a better option. Boeing, which owns ULA, lost $10.7 billion in 2024 and now plans to sell the company. Blue Origin and Sierra Space may be potential buyers. ULA is also considering engine recovery using inflatable shields to reuse parts and cut costs. Vulcan Centaur is very important for the United States military. In 2020, ULA was chosen as one of the main launch providers for security missions up to the year 2027. SpaceX was the only company certified to do those launches until Vulcan passed testing. Vulcan's first major military launch, USS F-106, will carry a navigation satellite from L-3 Harris. It was delayed in early 2025, forcing ULA to disassemble the rocket to make room for an Atlas VP. Now the rocket is being reassembled. The Space Force plans 11 Vulcan missions in 2025, but delays are likely due to satellite readiness. ULA also has a contract to launch the first Dream Chaser space plane made by Sierra Space. This flight was supposed to happen in 2024, but the company canceled it to focus on preparing two important national security launches that must happen before the end of 2024. It is still unknown when Dream Chaser will actually launch on Vulcan. So while Falcon Heavy is preparing for another important moon mission, ULA is trying to solve many problems. One thing is clear. The space race between companies is not just about building rockets. It is also about speed, cost, and staying useful to the people who pay for these missions.